Hi, welcome to an ITSA tutorial on finding net capacity. So today I'm going to go over a sample question on the NCCCO swing cab load chart test on the Grove truck mounted crane. So this is sample item number one. You can find this on the CCO website uh, and let's get into it. So the question says, what is the net capacity lifting off the main over the side? Now, in order to understand net, we need to first understand gross capacity. So here's the definition NCCCO gives for gross capacity. It's the maximum allowable crane loading as determined by the load rating chart and or any other applicable limitations. So what that means is gross capacity is the maximum load the crane can handle for a given configuration in regards to tipping stability or structural integrity. So let me give you an example. Let's say we have 80 feet of boom and a 25 foot radius. What it's saying here is once you line these two numbers up on the chart, it's going to give you a number. That's going to be the gross capacity, and that's based on tipping or structural. Now, there are some limiting factors as well. Limitations may include but are not limited to parts of line or line pull, uh, your load block or ball, rigging, or any other attachments. So just remember, you're only as strong as your weakest link. Any of these load handling, If any of these load handling devices cannot support the full weight of the load, then you're limited to that device. So now let's talk about net. Net capacity is the gross minus all applicable deductions. They give you this chart on page two, which lays out the weights of all the load handling devices you might be using. So we have hook blocks and headache balls over here, the stowed extension, the weight of the rigging depends, so that's going to be on one of the boxes in the question, uh, and anything else that might be equipped needs to be deducted. So getting into the question, it says, what is the net capacity lifting off the main over the side? The first thing we need to do is pull the right chart. So you're going to have a 360 chart, an over the rear, and two extension charts. This one is off the main, and we can see that here, 35 to 110 feet of main boom. We're lifting off the side, which is why we're using a 360 chart. And once I think I've pulled the right chart, I like to go over all these boxes in order to make sure they all line up. So we have configuration, outriggers fully extended, removable counterweight, 7,800 pounds, all this lines up. So now let's get into finding the gross now that we know we have the right chart. So we have 70 feet of main boom. Our radius is 50 feet. And again, it, you can see there above radius, it says NA on the main boom angle. So these are the two numbers we're going to use to find gross. So all I'm going to do is line these two numbers up. And I'm going to come up with 11,450, and that is my gross. So now we're going to take that number and subtract all of the deductions laid out on the chart. And again, it's important to go through these in order because it's really easy to miss some of these deductions. So first up, right under radius is auxiliary boom head. From page 2, it says that weighs 143 pounds. The next few boxes are NA, so I'm going to skip those until we get to the block. This is where we're lifting from. The 15 ton one sheave block weighs 380 pounds, and I'm gonna get into the two parts in a second. Next we have the 7.5 ton ball, 10 feet below tip. Now what's going on here is the ball is not being used for this pick, it's just hanging 10 feet off the end of the boom tip. So we need to deduct the weight of the ball and the 10 feet of rope that we're not using. So we can see right here, auxiliary rope weighs a pound per foot, so 10 feet, pound per foot, that's how we get minus 10 there as our deduction. Next we have the rigging, uh, and it says here that weighs 250 pounds, so that we're going to take that into account. At this point we have all of the obvious deductions, but we need to make sure our configuration is correct. So this right here is pulled from page 2 with all of the deductions on it. It gives you some information on the wire rope that we're using. What it says here is permissible line pulls 12,920 pounds. What that means is that a one-part line can safely lift, lift up to 12,920 pounds. Now, the way these charts work is anything above the minimum for lifting the load needs to be deducted. So in this case, the gross is 11,450. The line pull is 12,920, which means we only need a one-part line. But guess what? We have two parts equipped. So we need to deduct the extra part of line that we're not using. The problem is we don't know the length of the one part that is not needed. So what we need to do 
is go to the range diagram and we're going to use the information from the chart to get the tip height. So this is a picture of the range diagram. What we're looking for is height from ground and feet. That's your tip height. So we're going to use the boom length and the radius that they give us to figure out how high this block is from the ground so we can deduct it. So we have our boom and extension length and feet here. We're at 70 feet. We have the radius down here. Again, remember it's at 50. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow this arc. And you can see right here is where it meets in the middle. So that is what I'm going to follow over to the height from ground and feet. You can see that there. So that lines perfectly with 50. So now I know that my deduction is 50 because my main rope is a pound per foot and I'm 50 feet off the ground. So I'm going to go back here. Again, so that's where I took that. So the one part not needed, 50 pounds. So after I subtract everything, I should come up with 10,279. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, if you like this video, please subscribe. There will be more lessons coming soon. And for full NCCCO test prep, you can visit our website, itsofamerica.com, and schedule a training there. Thanks.